So imagine that you're on Wall Street Journal, right? And you're just trying to read this article about a face mask, I guess. But as soon as you read a few words, you're blocked by this paywall. And you would subscribe, but you can't pay $20 a month because you're a tier, tier 3 sub of Pokemane. Pokemane. But I was also the top donator for the month of January. Yeah! Yeah! Pokey Punch! Pokey Punch! So instead, what if there's a way to bypass all these subscription walls automatically? I mean, yeah, let's do it. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. I just copped a fitty went and put it on my watch. Yeah, I could drop a milli go and pop it on a stock, but I'd rather be a dick, throw it up and make a watch. Yo, what's good, everyone? It's Nay, and welcome back to another video. So there's currently an extension on the Google Chrome store called Hover, which can bypass almost any paywall automatically. So it works on sites like Medium, Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, and like a hundred more. Right now it has over 3,000 users and a 5 out of 5 rating. So yeah, you guys can go check it out. And yeah, if you remember last video, we made an ad blocker Chrome extension and I was talking about bypassing paywalls as a next step. And yeah, I was working on it, but then I found out that it was actually kind of illegal. Then I emailed one of my law professors. Yeah, I took a law class one time. I don't really know why. It was kind of, it was a total waste of time. And pretty much he said that if anything like this was going to be made, it should be open sourced. And what is open sourced? Well, it pretty much means that it's up for open collaboration or that anybody can view or edit the product's code. And I'm not really sure about the legality of it, but um, yeah, whoever published it is anonymous. Uh, so yeah, I don't know who wrote it, but I will say that their code is really fucking good. So yeah, again, Hover is published on the Chrome Web Store. You can try it out. But in this video, we're going to be talking about how it works and how you guys can bypass any paywall. Let's head right in. All right, so there's three main methods of making this work. And the first one is to act like we came from a social media site. The second is spoofing our machine as a Google ad bot. And the third is just to disable all cookies. And yeah, we're going to be going over all of this. So don't worry if anything doesn't make sense right now, like what a cookie is, because we're going to be going over it. To bypass a paywall, it takes one of these methods and it depends on the site. Like on some websites, we can bypass the paywall by using method one. And yeah, then another third of websites can be bypassed with method number two. Um, but yeah, let's just talk about all these methods. All right, so the first one is to act like we came from a social media site. So why would this work? Well, it's because when an article gets posted on a social media site like Twitter or Facebook, these sources are going to want to let you read the article because then they get like a new potential user. Like if your friend posts an article and you click on it, and you can't read it like they get they can't draw any new users in. But if you're able to read it and actually like the article, chances are you're going to want to read other articles on the site. So, yeah, pretty much when you come from a social media site, they're going to let you read it. All right, so how do we do this with programming? So whenever you visit a website, like let's say google.com, your browser gives Google some information about your computer. Some examples of the information that the website would get is like your IP address, the language that the website should be in, and also which site linked you to this current site. And yeah, all this information is included inside what is called an HTTP header. So what we can do is change this HTTP or huge TD tag protocol header to show that we came from a site like Twitter. And yeah, then the website that has the article that we're trying to read won't block us with a paywall. For this method in the code of the Chrome extension, all it does is just delete the part of the HTTP header that shows where we came from and instead replaces it with t.co, which is Twitter's website. And the next way we can bypass paywalls is by spoofing our machine as a Google ad bot. Pretty much all sources want to comply with Google because they want their articles to show up when people search up for their keywords. And one of the ways that Google is able to get the data about an article, like keywords in it, is through an ad bot or a web crawler. This is an automated script that will go through the entire article and store its information. So if the crawler gets blocked by a paywall, then it can't scan the article and then the article won't show up on Google when people search for similar stuff. So sources don't really want to block Google ad bots with a paywall. And if we pretend that our computer is a Google ad bot, then we won't get blocked either. And yeah, we can do this in the same way as we did before. And that's by changing the HTTP header. So we change our IP address and what's called a user agent name to be identical to a Google ad bot. Then we spoof our machine to be an ad bot. In the code of hover, what we can do is delete the parts of the HTTP header that has the IP address and the user agent, and instead change it to the info of a Google ad bot. And now this will get past almost all the paywalls. The last method of bypassing paywalls is to block all web cookies. 
Web cookies are pretty much small bits of information that the browser keeps about you. And so some examples of this information is like how many times you clicked on a button and also how many times you visited a site. So yeah, this is actually like the most powerful, but the least ideal approach. Like in the other methods, you can still sign in and, you know, like and comment and favorite whatever stuff you want to. And it's like you have a membership. But when you block cookies, you can't sign in anymore because the website can't store that information. So basically, a lot of websites allow you to read five free articles before they block you with a paywall. But how do they keep track of how many free articles you've read? Well, they do this with cookies. So every time that you visit a source's website, cookies on the browser will keep track of this. So the first time that you visit the website, the cookie will store that you visited the site once. And then the second time, it'll be two and then three until it's over five, which is when it'll block you with a paywall. So the way we can bypass this paywall is by blocking all cookies. And when we block cookies, the source will think that it's the first time we're visiting the site or the first article that we're reading ever. So they won't block us with the paywall. The way we can do this in the code of the extension is to change the Chrome settings to block cookies for this site. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Like, I mean, there's more code that goes into extension, but these are really the main things. And yeah, for bypassing paywalls and the extension, I really hope that it's not long term because on a scale of like one to ethical, it's like a solid three. So yeah, I hope in the long run, like all of this gets patched and uh, it doesn't happen anymore. Like it's not able to be bypassed and maybe the prices will get lowered. And yeah, that pretty much brings us to the end of this week's video. If you guys liked the video, uh, thanks. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. I just copped a fitty went and put it on my watch. Yeah, I could drop a milli, go and pop it on a stock. But I'd rather be a dick, throw it up and make them watch. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. Moving through your city with my coffee and a glide. Bitch, ask me, are you